with Lost Tube, it's Kerry and Stitches. It's Friday the 21st of May and this is Floss Tube 97. 97! I've got things planned for my 100th. Well, I've got the title at least. I hope you're all doing really well and you've had a great stitchy fortnight. Um, welcome if you're a new view here, viewer, can't words. Welcome if you're a new viewer here, it's lovely to have you with me. Um, I'm guessing a few of you have come from um, Becca's recommendation, so thank you to Becca for the great shout out, and thank you to Kirsty too. She gave me a lovely shout out. Literally watched two floss tubes and was like, shout out, shout out. So it's lovely to have you with me. Yes, I've passed that magic milestone. I am over the moon. Um, I think sort of sitting there going, ooh, waiting for the big drop off because it happens. But I'm super happy that you're all here, um, and it's lovely to be able to share my stitching with you um, yeah if you are new and you've joined in welcome back if you're a returning viewer um, I'm thankful for, I am very thankful to have you here too just because you've stuck with me you know what I'm about so it's lovely to have you here I have got stacks of stuff today I mean usually it's like I have lots of little piles you know with three things in you know Three things in the haul pile, three things in the whip pile, three things in the FFO. No, today these are big stacks. So I'm excited to share my fortnight of stitching with you, talk through my plans, shout out the under, under a thousand subs club. Um, because even though I've hit that ma magic marker now, um, I'm going to seriously continue to champion this because it's so important um, to, to share the love around. So. I have coffee. It is such a wet and miserable day here. It's been like this for the last week, two weeks now. Um, yeah, I've got plants to go in the garden and things like that and it's just kind of so miserable I don't want to go out there. And the squirrel's been digging up all my petunias. I'm so annoyed with it. Um, where I sit to work, so I'm still working from home predominantly, I've got a lovely big trough of sweet peas that I'm growing. And I thought, because it's, you know, they grow up. I'll just put a couple of petunias in the bottom. I don't know a lot about gardening, but I thought it'd be pretty. Nope, squirrels eating those, all three of them. It was like literally big dig holes. So I had a good read up and discovered that they don't like marigolds. Uh, marigolds are very pretty. I don't like the smell. That's probably why squirrels don't like them. They've also, he's also been um, systematically emptying my pl uh, planter by the front door. So, but he's eaten the lobelia out of that one. And there's another planter in the garden where he's eaten it's just got like a big patch so I'm it's empty so I'm really frustrated that the squirrels eaten all my plants so marigolds it is I'm, as I said, I'm not a fan but I will be planting them every year from now on so and I have got netting to protect my uh, beans that I'm gonna grow I was hoping to get those in this weekend but it's still miserable, cold and miserable I went out yesterday I mean I'm still in my winter boots and I went out, did the school run yesterday in my winter coat. In fact, that's a regular feature at the moment. So yeah, that's enough. So, um, other news, my eldest finished his, uh, his last official full day of school today. He's has, he has two exams next week, uh, next Monday, and then he has his leavers assembly and everything next Friday, and he is done. Um, he will go to college in September. He had an interview to do art and design yesterday and it all looks very positive and it looks like they've um they've kind of provisionally unofficially offered him a place so um that's excellent he's really excited to go and do that um as sharon heard yesterday because i was chat i was zooming with sharon yesterday afternoon and uh, when he came down after zoom she said i've never heard him um speak so much because so um i'm really pleased for him youngest still has um another term to go at school, or half term to go at school, so it's about another eight, seven, eight weeks, so she finishes 21st of July um, at her current school, um, and they've got activities planned, and because they can't go for their induction days, they had to, uh, the, uh, she came home and said, oh, we've got a teacher coming in next, um, from, from the senior school next week to talk to us about, you know, the transition, because usually they will go for two days in January, uh, in July, but they won't be able to this year because of, um, primary schools have been told they have to stay in bubbles until the end of the school year. High, um, high schools not so much but the primary schools do so 
yeah so they can't go and ha they can't go and fortunately she's been she actually when my eldest went there she came through the opening even she's had a good look around she knows they've done activities and um, not in the last couple of years but they've done activities there because uh, it's a uh, what they call a feed she goes to a feeder school so she kind of knows it I know the school well it was my high school um, so it's all kind of it's it's not completely alien to her um, the, the primary school uses the sports facilities every year for um, their sports day and things anyway that's enough about life uh, what me I worked uh, I went to the office one day came home and, and one day a fortnight in the office and the rest I'm still working from home I, I like my little desk in the corner and I talk to the hamster so um, anyway Lots of stitching, so six minutes of rambling, let's get on with the stitching. So, as you know, my main year was bees, and I have been stitching up a storm. It's been a hive of activity. See what I did there? Hive of activity. So, I am going to go through... Let's start with the... Oh, let's start with the finishes. And one... That's not a finish, that is... But actually, one I'm going to show you is a finish. But it's not um, bees. So Dawn, you're going to have to wait about a minute longer. Um, Dawn Frosty X was a little disappointed that I didn't have um, a lot of bees last time. So here's my finish of Tiny Modernist Christmas Dreams. I'm fairly sure I didn't show this last time because it was still in the plus tube box. Um, let's go with close up. So I think I might have had a block to do maybe. So there's the top. It says Joy. I'm looking at England. I thought it said you then. I'm thinking what is it, what is it all about? So I did put in a tiny bit of um, gold metallic on the trumpet. So I just kind of did gold accents as an extra star there, a star on top of the tree. Um, I don't think there's anything in the plum pudding. The candle, uh, yeah, a tiny bit in the stocking and the candle. Santa's belt buckle is, um, snowman doesn't have anything. I think the snowman and the pud are the only blocks that don't. And I didn't do anything extra for the centre either. I did debate putting something in the reef and I thought, no, that's fine. And the sleigh and the dove and the robin, which was the alternative to the cardinal. And the sleigh's just got a bit of gold in the presents. And the birds haven't got anything either. So, Tiny Modernist Christmas Dreams. This was the 2020 Stitch Along. Um, I am so pleased with it. I love it. Uh, I was gifted the chart from by Heather. Sharon sent me the fabric, so uh, it's, it's stitched in the called for floss uh, with the fancy floss conversion. Uh, there's an option for fancy floss conversion that um, Sharon McKinnon gives you, but the red should have been Louisiana hot sauce, and I did it in a colour and cotton, which was unnamed at the time, which was an unnamed one, but um, but it's very close to Louisiana hot sauce. So love that. So um, that's going into my finished box. I'm not going to actually FFO this yet. I'm kind of waiting to see what I can find at Christmas if I can do a bit of something a bit more creative than framing. Although I do think it would look really good in a white frame. So I've got options. I have options. Okay. So, oh, let's do one other. Actually, technically it's a B1. There we go. 21 is Christmas dreams. So that's all done. Um... Non, my other non-mania finish is uh, a Lizzie Kate Flip It that does actually have a bee. So on um, um, International Bee Day, which was yesterday, I did stitch this little tiny bee to finish this. I've been using this as a little bit of travel. Actually, I haven't, I haven't finished it. There's a stitch missing. I should pop that in because it should have the dark green should be somewhere over here. There's one stitch of it. Um, I should pop that in. So I'm still calling it a finish. I really won't be showing it again next time. Uh, yeah, so this is the August block from the Flip It Stamps. Uh, stitched on 30, 32 count. Yeah, Star Sapphire. Sorry, I've got some on Star Sapphire and some on Water Lily. I had to look to see which one it was. So this is, yeah, Water Lily, the uh, Witch Out. One of my favourite linens, actually, Witch Out. For like a plain, if I want a plain, neutral, green linen, I will always pick Star Sapphire. I love Star Sapphire. It does need linen top. I literally finished it last night. Let's take that out and let's put it on my needle minder there. So there we go. Yeah, so I stitched this in exactly none of the called for colours. Uh, three Jodri, I haven't bought my project bag with it in. So these were Jodri designs 
I've talked about this before, the borders are jodery. The, oh, the yellow and I think the light green's rainforest, the dark green's just a DMC. The dark green in the leaves and actually the, all the yellow, I fussy cut uh, a jodery floss called Seasons of Change, Change of Seasons. It's one way or the other. And the brown is Picnic Basket. That actually might be the call for. I don't know if it is or not. And the B, I literally just grabbed three. I just grabbed a black, a white, and a yellow out of the um, B mania. So it did actually form part of my B mania. There we go. So that's done. So I only have October, November, and December left to do because I did September before. I do have buttons to sew on it yet, um, but I've got three to do now. Um, I I don't like the scarecrow at all from the October block. So Heather Link is my homeboy. Um, my fantastic friend has re um, Lizzie Kate has a freebie called Moon Over Blackbird on her blog and on her website too, which I love. And I've stitched actually that piece. And Heather has stitched uh, has because it needed to be shortened a little bit. So she, Heather kind of basically shortened the pumpkin for me, and um, I shall be stitching that instead. And I will be super happy. And I'm excited to I'm excited to start that. Um, I'm going to kit that up today and get that in the project bag because for my daily 30 zombie run I still need 97, 93 stitches on a flip it so I'll just start the new one. Um, let's, what should we go? I'm going to go kind of like the, the slightly more worrying ones. Um, we have the uh, Hello Honey chart from the Cross Stitcher 370 cover kit. I decided I wasn't going to do the, the um, Card. I was going to do the card and I was just going to frame it because it, with the cute little apertures. Then I decided I had an, another idea instead. And this is my, so this is just um, a scrap of, I don't know if you can see, it's washing out. The light is awful. It's kind of, it's kind of blue grey uh, fabric from Sparklies. It was one of the grab bags, I don't know what it is. So let's cover that one over for a sec. So those are the three there. Um, I did bees instead of French knots and I made a slight mistake in this one so I didn't fit the words in but that's fine because I'm going to put a bee charm in it instead because I have lots of them and um, this one was from a different cross stitcher and I have got an idea for these how to finish them it won't be in the card so that's coming to, uh, that's actually for considering these are teeny tiny stitches like 150 stitches I think that one was 150 that was that one's about 130. I'm guessing that one was probably knocking on 170, 180 stitches, you know, 50 stitches there. Um, considering that, uh, I've got a, a finish that'll probably take me longer to finish them than it would have actually to stitch them, but I think it's gonna look really cool. So I'm excited about that. Uh, let's chuck that up. And then I'm gonna repurpose the card into floss drops, because why not? Um, and then we have, sorry, oh, I thought I had, Apparently not. Ah, there we go. There's the get the rest of the the, cut, um, the charts out. Uh, we have the monthly Malkin July block. I was going to try and collect these and then didn't. Um, so I just kind of stitched it up. Looks a bit like a candy corn. Uh, these are with the autumn sulky pack. I am debating, and I think I used that might be just a DMC in there actually. I think I'm. De I was debating putting the little like b-scap entrance in because I kind of feel like it looks like candy corn so I might still do that or even just stitch an outline or something so that's heart in hand monthly markings but it's done um and then we had that's not that one I've ended up with a random pro school or one of these mini cards so I think it was in the bottom of a project bag uh, then we did and then I did the pro schooler b I love that I've loved this for ages and Heather sent it me and you know it's one of those scenes you like yeah, I must stitch that, I must stitch that, and it, and it sits there, and I think it, it's that thing, um, six months to do a job that takes 20 minutes. Okay, slightly longer for stitching, but, you know, I did this in an evening. Uh, that's the call for colours, I think. Maybe I changed the green. Maybe I did it fancy. I have no idea. I don't know. Possibly is the call for, might not be. It's similar. I think the green is a fancy. I don't know. No, no, no. Black 14 count Black Ada. I went through the scraps bin for my mania. Um, 
but then I was gifted Frosted Pumpkin, The Beekeeper. Never done Frosted Pumpkin before, but always like this one. Oh, bees, you know. So, somebody made me do it. They shall remain nameless. This is on 16 counts, like nutty. Yeah, I really should have just started this on the edge, but, you know. There we go, there's a finish. That's in the called for threads, except for the pink flower and the little heart, which is stitched in uh, Wheat Style Works Begonia. And I used, should have been a pale blue light effect. And actually I used just the white one. It doesn't show up particularly well, but um, it's, kind of, it's a little bit there. And then there's some around the wings. That's that one done. Um, Elizabeth Designs, Beehive, as Tiff sent me this love that lots of special lots of satin stitch i'm not great at satin stitch and i was a bit kind of like yeah, it's gonna look awful do i just change it to cross stitch and i've added in and i've got a hoop out and this is on a uh, gray even weave no gray linen actually ignore my show notes they say even weave so beehive by elizabeth designs oh except i just I love that. So satin stitches on the hive and the leaves um, and the rest is cross stitch. I love it, absolutely adore it. That, again, that's sulky. So um, is the dark brown sulky? Yeah, I said a dark brown sulky. Yeah, dark. so it's all sulkies. Loving, really pleased with how that came out. It's been fantastic to get some of the little charts that I've bought going, going oh, cute bee, and, you know, pick them up, especially if they've been on sale, like the monthly markings and things. Um, so much gifted stuff. People are like, you like bees? Let me send you something. Um, well, three people, four people, four people. Um, the lovely April, when Lizzie, uh, Kate stopped doing it, April, the lovely April, May, June sent me the uh, Buzzy String Flip It. Hmm. And it's been in my stash for about two years. So I keep saying, must do that, must do that. And then I try and stitch seasonally and then it doesn't happen because of stuff. So, I'm all ready for summer. So that's Lizzie Kate. So I kind of would, I did a mix of call for and a mix of my own conversions that were similar. And it's not staying in this, but I was seeing whether it fitted and then it stopped. Oh, there we go. So I'm really pleased. This is uh, 18 count aid, uh, parchment Ada from Zweigart. This is the, uh, actually all these little scraps of 18 count Zweigart. Um, Ada, a what? Oh, just checking it's still in view. Oh, oh, the off cuts from Alice, one of my friends, Alice. So it's super soft to use, and I'm so pleased. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I have literally used every scrap of it now. So, and I got an idea for how to do this. I was going to, I bought, bought a long time ago, I picked up a load of really cheap boards, um, like signs that I could do them um, from Poundland, and um, I've decided I'm not going to do that with this finish. Uh, so I've got an idea and I think it's going to work and it'll feed into something I'm going to show you later. Potentially. Um, those were all my finishes. I think I've done quite pretty well so far. So out of... It's not in here. I don't think. I'm just looking to see whether I've got my mania. I didn't bring my mania checklist in. Is that it? Yeah. I think it's stuffed in here. Anyway, so I lost out with how many that is. So I think it's six finishes and for Mania and I've started nine. Started ten. No idea. We're just gonna get this go with it. So we might as well just finish talking about Mania and then I will show you my other whips that I've worked on. So um Let my example shine by Chessie and me. I'm actually not going to do that. I was going to always originally plan to do the needle roll. There's the other side of it. But I've since decided not to do the needle roll. I'm going to frame it and add it to my cross stitch wall. Or as Hubby called it yesterday, the cross stitch takeover. Because I'm sitting in front of where I was filming. So I'm, film, I'm filming on the opposite side of the table today. Um, where I was filming my stitch with me last week. Thank you for those who watched and left me such lovely comments. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
nine, ten. So I've got ten framed pieces and a bell pull on the wall at the moment in front of me. It's a really long, it literally, um, it literally goes it's the, oh, it's the entire length of the dining room. So um, it's my stitchy wall. It's badly spaced. So I am literally going, because it was originally I only had three or four pieces up and they've stayed where they were and I've just gone do, 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 adding pieces in. So it's fine. So I'm looking now for pieces to fit in the gaps. And I have, I've worked out three pieces that are going in that I'm really happy with where they will fit in the whole grand scheme of it. Think I've got an idea for a fourth. But that one of them, uh, when I find a frame for the Chessie and Me piece, I kind of know where that's going, I think. Anyway, um, so that's one of my, that was a whip, but I literally had like four rows of grass done in the date. So that's done now. Well, it's not done now, it's, I didn't show you the piece of work, did I? 36 count oatmeal by Sparklies. So when you saw this last, I had two rows of the grass done, uh, four rows of the grass done in the date, and that's where we're at today. Um, I have done, let's fold that over at the top, all of these little swirly bits are actually Smyrna crosses, so they I was, they look, took twice as long and don't look like anything else. So I've got the rice stitch to learn, I've never done rice stitch before, so I need to do that in the, for the B-skep that will go next to the house. Um, and there's some more Smyrna crosses somewhere else I forget where so and then I've got my big B to go in here so it's I'm really enjoying stitching on this and this is my current daily 30 piece where I stitch on it for 30 minutes a day and that surprised that so when I finished Christmas dreams this was this became my daily 30 and it's surprising what you can do in 30 minutes I average about 80 to 100 stitches in 30 minutes and I haven't done my work today um yes Kim that is a needle minder uh, and I'll talk more about those later so I'm actually going to put that on top of that. So let me talk about it. Um, birthday present from Heather was industry by uh, Summer House Stitch Works. So and that's what I got with that. And yes, look, needle hanging. So I'm no needle mind on this one. I'm just going to tuck this in. There we go. So. I think that was 200 stitches and then I put it away, might have been 300. So, I think, yeah, so the B skeps, the, so the top B skep is done in, it's essentially half stitch. I'm just looking. No, um, satin stitch actually. Zigzaggy satin stitch. More satin stitch. Good thing I didn't put the hoop away. And that's actually on the grey Ada as well. That like grey linen as well. So at least I know it works on this linen. I started, I haven't brought the chart, I haven't got the chart or anything in here. Uh, Where there are bees has two smalls with it. Um, one is says B and is a big B, and the other is like a teeny mini mini sampler. And I'm doing teeny mini sampler. I did do the B in the wrong colour. I don't. It'll do. It's fine. Um, so that's where I got on that. That's about 500 stitches. So that's not much more to go on that. And I had the other piece ready for the other one. Do I have a picture of them? Oh, hang on. I do. There we go. Those. Those are the ones. I'm just checking that was the right way up then. Yeah. There we go. So I'm having fun stitching those. So the B will be one of my starts next week. Because I decided I kind of got into the I was starting one every day and then I was just gonna see what I could finish and then I went, hmm, need to still stitch my zombies. And that's my zombie run piece for daily 30s. So I decided to uh stitch on new things Monday to Thursday and then uh Come on, words carry stitch and then next and then pick up uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Pick up other things that need to be stitched on for challenge groups, and then yeah. So next Monday to Thursday, I will have more new starts. So my final new start for this week 
is Hands On Design Block Party Buzz. I've had this in my stash for about two years. Um, and I have started it finally. It's on 14 count Ada. Um, yes, I know I have the world's smallest margin, but this was a pre-cut piece of 18 inches. I need 16 and a half inches. It'll fit, it'll be fine. You finish it like a biscornu, so literally I will be folding over the edge and then sewing together the whip stitches. Um, it's fine. It is fine. A three inch border to me would be, it actually would feel wasteful, even two inches on that. Don't need it for a biscornu. So there we go. So that's kind of, I'm stitching it in the cool for colours. Oh, I think it might be the odds. I think blue topaz, uh, the blue is blue topaz and it should be blue jay or something. And I didn't have it and I'd, well, I couldn't find it, one of the two. There we go. So I'm pleased with that start. So each hive is slightly different as you go around, which is cool. Not a huge difference, it's just kind of subtle differences. And each kind of corner is different. So the hives are on flat and then you've got like bees or a tree or something on the um, corners. And then I've got another piece of fader cut for the top block there, which is just basically like a honeycomb. And then you stitch on the piece of what's it, which I have as well, which comes with the chart. Oh, let's pop that over there. And I have an empty project bag. This is from Sarah. Um, whose name I can't remember. Oh, Sarah, I'm sorry. Whip bags. I can see the business card and I can't reach it, but I can't see it either because my glasses on. So, I can't remember. Hopeless. So, Hopeless and Sarah, you being... Right, I'm going to try and reach for it because... <laughs> There we go. It was in the project bag and then I took the stuff out of the project bag to sort out what was in there and then left it out. Not enough whip bags. I wanted to say no more whip bags and I'm like, that's ridiculous now. Not enough whip bags. And you're absolutely right, Sarah. Absolutely right. There you go. I love my bags from Sarah. So all my, I'm gonna have a mini tidy up. So, no. Threads of virtue, which aren't the call for. I think I, I think I kitted that myself with a bit of a mixture okay so i've kind of shown you some of the things i've got left to start for mania what else so the b pendibule still needs to be started um i'm not going to go through uh can't show you that this is empty actually so i just haven't started pulling threads that's right i've got beehive violets there is no cover picture i can't show you it joe you know which one it, you know what it looks like then because joe stitched it um and then I've just got the other two of these, uh, these two smalls. So it's that. And these are all from a Savvy Stitcher from Cross Stitcher magazine. And that's probably the, I'm not doing, I'm just going to do the circle. I decided the top. So those two. Once again, scrap fabrics. Um, and then I have sleeping beads to stitch on as well because I, I didn't pull that in. So, and that will be my bee mania. A random piece of green tissue paper. Okay, so, and the only other thing I've stitched on is O Tannenbaum, which is, there we go. And I am gonna try and do the finish like that. So I stitched this bottom block and now working on Santa and then I shall do the sheep and then a Christmas tree and then I should do the centre block. And I am stitching it on fabric. 18 count something from Sparklies. I bought a load of mystery bags and these are some the I, I had blue, I had grey, I had a couple of like neutrals and that's Santa where he's at now. And again, another very lightweight needle minder. So, before I go into haul, which my hubby says I should do haul like Olivia B does, but no. Um, Kim was asking me about needle minders, and yeah, I, do, I use needle. I stitch as you as you all know. I stitch in hand, 
Um, but how I have a lot of needle minders. Some are really heavy ones. Um, I often can't help myself when I get them from the shop uh, when I have them for the shop. So, um, but uh, I tend to go for small plastic ones. Often they come from buttons or basic flat backs. Um, the lightweight wooden ones. So these are the kind of ones I tend to pick because like that one is a wooden one. These, I mean, that was gifted to me, but it's lightweight and I tend to have them at the bottom of my project so they don't weigh heavy. Um, a little glitter star, but I like these ones and just really basic, inexpensive flat backs. That was a button that was needed to shank, uh, had a shank cut off. Again, that's super light. And even though that one's enameled, because it's small, it's really quite lightweight and that was just a small charm. My absolute favourite needle minder is that little sunflower again that was a button with a shank that I cut the shank off and I like this one because because of the grooves in the sunflower the needle sort of sits quite comfortably on it and doesn't move so that's one of my favorites and then what I do so I mean that one yeah that one's not the bottom so as you can see that's kind of where I tend to have them sometimes they're a bit lower I will move them around just to be comfortable uh, and then let's just move some charts out of the way. I use a clipboard and keep all of my working copies on a clipboard as you've seen before and I have, and I have two needle minders sat on the top um, that I use which is sort of stuck into the metal bit of the clip which attach themselves to the metal bit of the clipboard. Um, I take them off and swap them around sometimes and throw them around but I, so I have both magnets on the back and then Put them on like that. That one for some reason also has a paper clip attached to it. So that's kind of how I organise. Um, so when I'm stitching, I'm stitching with I, I'm just with it on my lap, and I will either have this stitching sat on my lap or on the arm of the chair like that. Um, so when I'm changing colours, changing needles, I just drop onto usually onto those more so than. Um, if I'm just re-threading a needle it tends to go on the one on the fabric, um, if I'm swapping colours or something like that I, I tend to go for the ones on top, as you can see it's got several needles on that one, because that was from when I was stitching buzzy string and I had, because you know it's say 20 stitches and then I need to stitch something else which is another 20 stitches and then I don't want to carry the distance so, oh sorry for knocking the camera then. So when I was stitching sort of here, and all the most of the letters were in this um, uh, in deep C, so I would kind of keep that threaded up, and then there were bits like when I finished that, I knew I needed it for there, and the same uh, with the red and things. So I kind of just kept them threaded up on the top of the on the green, I kept them threaded up on top um, of my clipboard because I knew I'd finished that section, and um, did it that way. Uh, right. So that's how I do do my needle minders. Uh, just I tend to prefer small, lightweight plastic ones, uh, or wooden, or wooden ones. Um, I should probably ought to have my daily thirty one on my daily thirty project. I don't actually know where I've put it. I think it's still on um, uh, MLK sampler. There we go. Okay, let's have a quick look down. Right, we are, we're into haul. It's a pile today, and of which most of it I didn't buy. That's always a good haul. Um, so, random thing first. My, I saw this a few weeks ago in um, a British supermarket called Sainsbury's, and I was like, I'm not paying that, but my sister-in-law works for Sainsbury's. And she ordered it and had it clicked and collected. So I went and picked it up a couple of um, Saturday after my last video. Um, it's a spice rack, but I saw it and thought this is fantastic for putting smalls in, especially as I discovered you can tilt the bottom one quite well, and it's not, that's not there. I don't know whether the top one was tilted, but I could if I wanted to and have it like that. And oh, there's my, this has been living in it ever since, because I haven't put it away and I don't know where to put it at the moment. So this is my plan and I'm hoping to get all the bees in this. So I think this is really cool. So 
That was a gift from my sister-in-law, and I'm just gonna put it there, because I can, rather than trying to twist it. And then we have this lot to go through. Um, if you're new here, this is not a new usual thing. You might find a couple of bits of thrifting. I do love my thrifting. Um, I still have last times on the table, would you believe it? Um, okay, that's a giveaway. So my sparkless fab for the month came in. <coughs> sparkless is a UK diet. Um, Kate is fab. Um, it's all crinkles. I'm not taking that bag. These are 18 cat Ada in burnt umber and vintage bronze. So, I've changed my fabric in the month club. I've got three months. Kate allows you to do a wish list from her um, fabrics, and that's how I did my 36 count uh, fabrics. And then I moved some 18 count Ada because I'm kind of really loving stitching on Ada at the moment. And I thought I'd up my hand dyed stash. Uh, so Kate has. Um, so when you join the fabric of the month, there's a waiting list at the moment. You can submit a wish list of, of her fabrics. So. If you know that you are never, ever, ever going to stitch on a piece of pink fabric or super mega brights, then you can say to her, actually, here are 12 fabrics I like I like from your range. Please could I have those? And she will just send them in random orders. So I never know what I'm getting. I'm, I know what I'm getting, but I don't know what I'm getting, if that makes sense. Um, I'm down. I think I've, I had a list of about eight left, but I've 10 left, something like that. Discovered that the the slightlys don't stick, don't um, die so well on Ada. So I've taken all those off the list and a couple where I went, mm, that's really similar to a couple of the others I've got. Um, I did one, one in, so I think I've got six left now, um, including my absolute favorite, which is called Black Dahlia. So, so, and then I will go to whatever she wants to send me, just for a bit of variety. So, Sharon sent me the um, 14 cat Ada for my butt party and um, when she did it, she sent me some other fabrics too because she is a kind and generous soul. Um, Sharon only stitches on Ada. Um, that's her preference and... Sorry, I've got a bit of stuff on my finger. And she was sent this by Inera, which I believe is from Silk Weaver, but I could be wrong. It's so Rogue Cross Stitch Company. And it's called Spring Sunrise and it's printed fabric. And you see it was marked up as 16 count Ada, which it clearly isn't. It's probably, we think probably a 32 count. And she was like, well, I won't stitch on it. Would you like it? Oh, yes, please. Isn't that fabulous? It's a printed one, so it's worse than that. So she sent me this as well. And then she was having a clear out. Um, and just sent me some other fabric she's picked up along the way and decided to, um, what word am I looking for? Expand my fabric stash. So we've got a 28 count Joblin khaki. I don't know the, I don't know the dyer. So these are just all random cuts that she picked up at her LNS. Just some uh, 28 count white. Can never go far wrong with a bit of white. Here we have, I love this colour, a couple of 25 counts now. Isn't that awesome? I don't know why I'd stitch on it, but I loved it. She showed me, I was like, ooh, I like that. So good to know, just good solid dyed colours. And then some really funky burnt orange. So, again, this is a 25 count. This one is labelled. So this is a Zweigart. This is a 32 count platinum Belfast. And we all know what um, how good platinum is. And looks like water, I think. Yeah, 30, 18 by 27. So loving that. And so, I mean, so many options for that one. And um, the last piece of fabric is... Um, Again, this is a 32 count, another fat quarter, and that really washes out because it's a lot sagier than that. Oh, there you go, that's the colour. That's lovely. I love this. <laughs> I love green. Can't help it, I'm always drawn to it. So I am excited to find something to stitch on this one on. Um, 
she sent me a couple of charts. Face for Flower by Hands On Design. I should be starting that quite soon. Two, four, and it's needs seven colours. And then A Birds of a Feather. I saw this, absolutely loved it. I didn't realise it was a series, but I saw it, loved it. So if anybody knows where you can get spring, fall and winter home as well, point me in that direction. I'm guessing it's going to be, it's a bird of a feather, I'm guessing it's going to be hard to find. But I saw it and I was like, oh, love that. I mean, it's me, isn't it? Bees, house, flowers, it's a small, it's only 61 by 61. Oh, love it. So I am tempted. I mean, two minds on this one. I want to start it yesterday, but I also, I can see that most of the colours in here are also in cardinal points. Now I don't want to pull the fabric from cardinal points. I just noticed I've got a scraggly bit of hair there. Um, don't want to pull it out in case I run out. Um, but again, they won't take much. Maybe the pinks would, but the pinks will be cherry bark and cherry wine. Oh, definitely, definitely got cherry bark, but definitely got cherry wine. So I don't know. I don't want to order extra if I can. Just I just need to get a ship. I think I might have to wait until I finish Cardinal Points and say, the minute I finish Cardinal Points, just chuck my phrase in that, because I think, let me have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Yeah, at least six of these colours out of the, I don't know, 12 are in Cardinal Points. I don't know. <gasps> no, I love it so much. And you also sent me this really cute journal. With a bee on the front, which I think was from. I don't remember now. She told me. She saw Tristan Wine, maybe? Home Goods. HG USA. Is the email maybe Home Goods? I don't know. It doesn't say. Oh, that's Horizon Group. I don't know. Anyway. It's super cute and come, actually comes with all thread and everything. So that was from Sharon too. We have the cute card that currently is covered in needle numbers. Oh, that's the radiator. It wouldn't be a floss tube if I didn't hit the radiator. Put those over there. Um, it's bit. We still got some. Right, let's crack on. Cross stitcher. This is issue three seventy one. There's the cover kit. I'm going to stitch that purse because a it's cute and B, I'm going to practice putting in a zip and I actually really like the picture postcard stitch along. Cross Stitcher magazine, you don't watch my floss tube channels but do something other than summer stitch alongs, please, and your Christmas one. I'd love to see a spring and I'd love to see an autumn. Maybe I should tell them that rather than just saying I'm a floss tube. Right, cross stitcher. There we go. I thought it was a bit thin this month. Don't know. So there's a better picture of the purse. And then um, let's go that one. That's part one and part two of the little I really like that, even though it is pretty much full coverage. It looks cute. It's got a bee in it, it's old. Contents pages. Like I've forgotten how to do a magazine clip through. Sorry, folks. There we go. So let's crack on. What do they say is trending? Giraffes are trending. They've always been trending in my book. So sunflower uh, little stitch from um, language of flowers from Jess, and sunflower means adoration. Apparently. Uh, office from Willow Fabrics. Um, we have got the living room is the room this week for the uh, living with cross stitch things. And then next week it is dressing room. How true is that? If uh, if I fit, I sit. I mean, let's face it if, it, if it doesn't fit, it still tries to sit. So for those cat lovers out there, that's cute. That's by Fiona Crouch. Uh, 
Pay stuck together. We have got using these giant Rico cushions, some seashells, and they are designed by Emma Congdon. I think it's the giant Rico cushions. Maybe it isn't. No, it was just on six count bin cup. I thought it was those Rico pre pre ones. Oh, six count, six count. I'm assuming six strands as well. Yep, six, six strands. We've got a cute little girl holding some button balloons. Maria Diaz. Um, I, Emma, lovely Greek scene by Emma Condon. That's beautiful, isn't it? Kind of makes you want to be there. I love the depth of it. But yeah, full coverage. Full coverage makes me want to cry. Yep, it's definitely full coverage. I like to look because sometimes there'll like be like there's like a row of seven things that's not, not full coverage. And we have got oh this is cute by Cheryl McKinnon, Tiny Modernist. Scissor pouch. So basically, you make the pouch and you stitch the top flap and the scissors. I'm a sh uh, I like that colour. What is it? What have they used? They don't tell you. I'm looking. I want to know what fabric that is. Petrol blue cashel linen. This is what I got. That is a nice colour. Oh, yeah. And the step by step instructions on how to do it. So it's cashel in petrol, blue petrol, petrol blue even. Letter library is the sea the seaside. I was very pleased to see that K was the lighthouse because that's how it should be. Because I always look to see what my letter is. I'd have been happy with a lighthouse or a beach hut. We have got, what else have we got? Letters pages, the secret garden. That's a really pretty thing. They seem to be really embracing kind of literature at the moment for, that's Susan Bates for their designs. And that is predominantly full coverage. Um, some kind of, well they are cards, but uh, kind of like a shadow effect, so you, they're only kind of stitched outlined kind of thing. Um, Doreen Jones, I believe they are, so I'm sure I saw it on her Facebook page. Oh. Yep, and then the next one's by Doreen Jones too, which is a family of very orange giraffes. Very 70s. Uh, next up in the three part for the um, new Alice stitch along. It's still raining. I like these. I don't know how stitch them, but I think they're really cool. So, scissor cases. I love that one. Can't. I mean, it's Amanda Butler who designed um, the spot sample I'm doing. Which kind of, I get that. So basically designers are given that stitch palette and a brief. So I really do like their design. Um, another, they've done a few purses before, so they've given you the option to make a feathers one. Which I'm guessing is probably the same dimension as and the full step-by-step -step instructions too, which is cool. So hopefully I can follow those and make that purse and not be terrified by zips anymore. Uh, the Pied Piper is the Grimm's Fairy Tale Stitch Along. Next month, we have got coming those really cute sloths and part two, which is that part of the Stitch Along and that's the other cover kit. So it's cool. That cover just shows you some of the projects I've mentioned. So this was cross stitcher issue 371. Right. Right. 
as it was um, International Bee Day yesterday, and I just broke my needle minder. You won't get this needle minder. I will make a new one. So there's a bee needle minder, so which is upside down as well. We'll hold it like that. If you'd like the bee needle minder, um, uh, what should we use? This time you'd like to stitch. This time you'd like the needle minder because if you, I've got like 97 B projects. So if I tell you to put B, then who knows? Needle minder. So that'll be mail. Two weeks. Open internationally. Be over 18. Don't say giveaway. Do all the things. Under a thousand subs club. Because I'll do that, and then hubby knows to look for the to put the thing across. I've got two new ones um, this week uh, that I've been catching up with. Both because they commented on my flush tube and I went looking. So don't start picking glue off a knit magnet, Kerry. You don't need to do that right now. Okay, so we have got Amy. It is Amy. Allegro Stitches. Um, she has such a variety of projects. She's really bubbly and fun. And she's uh, quite a new flush tuber. Um, so go and check her out. And Julia, the Stitcher Girl podcast. Julia is back. She's had a bit of a... Um, uh, a short a flush tube break and she's back with a new video this week uh, last week when did i watch it week before recently in the last couple of weeks so um there will be links below as will all of the nine million no all of the other flush tubers that i've shouted out for the under a thousand subs club everybody's linked below so there's somebody there that will appeal to you and go and give people some love and I'm excited to do my first community post and it, it was unlocked yesterday. I had my email from YouTube saying, you've unlocked your community thing. So I shall be able to post there and I'm, and I'm excited about that to be able to just to connect and to chat with you more. Storage issues. So um, as I was saying, just thank you very much for supporting my channel and um, for all your likes and sub um, subscriptions, especially the comments because they really do mean a lot. If you're new, tell me where you came from. I really love, like to thank people, especially if I don't know, they give me a shout out. It really does um, mean a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm all over the place now. I don't think I showed this. I found this in a thrift store. Look. So this is a frog in, um, in a little um, silver plated dish. Uh, no glass ones yet, but you know, so um, it's, I just find it funny, it was made in Canada and, it's, and it ran its way to the UK. So just a really, really, really sweet one. So I'm really pleased with that and I didn't pay a lot for it at all. Um, I think I found it for two pounds. So it was one of those, I saw it in the shops like meh, went to another shop, did some stuff, came back and then I um, walked up the road from it and I was like I need to go back and get that and they did so I did um have a uh, thing cutting off it's completely thrown me I don't know if I've told you about my plans I'm sure I did um basically it's mania and finish my zombie run project so um expect next time to see uh, Elizabeth Shepherd uh the remainder of my um mania and cardinal points are those the, those are those are the ones I'm kind of planning on doing um Go and see some of our new uh, uh, under a thousand subscribe people um, and give them some support. I'm probably just repeating myself now. So um, have a great stitchy fortnight, friends. Thank you for all the love you've shown my channel. I can't wait to use my community tab, which I think is what I was saying when the, my phone cut off. Um, the YouTube community has brought me some really, really good friends and um, you know who you are. And I'm really, it's a real blessing. Um, I've, learned, I've found people, I, I love my Daily 30 group, which I wouldn't have found if Sheryl hadn't have found my channel. And then I found Sheryl's channel, and because of that I went to watch Sheryl, and we became friends, and you know, it's all these things. So um, I just want to say have a great stitchy fortnight, um, sending best wishes, hugs, and all that kind of stuff to you, if you're going through stuff at the moment. Um, if you're anxious because of everything opening up, I'm not leaving my house until. I don't like, I, I don't like going out anyway. Um, so I'll happily stay on my sofa, Zoom with my friends and stitch because actually that brings me joy and happiness. Um, so until next time, friends, take care. Have a fantastic stitchy fortnight. Stitch what you love um, and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye bye.